Which Muslim army went to Indonesia, which has the largest population of Muslims in the world? Which Muslim army came to Malaysia? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? Where many countries, majority of the population are Muslims. Which sort? They did by their class. Traders went. Which army came to Malaysia? Which army went to Indonesia? The majority, almost all were non-Muslim, then almost all became Muslims, mashallah. And later on, now there are people coming afterwards. Malaysia became fully Muslim. Then you had the Chinese coming, you had the Indian coming, the Britishers coming. They are our new guest. You know, somebody called me a guest. So I said, before me, the Chinese are the guest. They aren't born here. So if you want the new guest to go first, ask the old guest to go back. The Chinese, they are not born here. Most of them. Or maybe the new generation, yes. So if you want the guests to go back, and those guests which are bringing peace in the community, they are benefit for the family. The fourth most common misconception regarding Islam is that Islam was spread by the sword. Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. So if you translate, it means peace was spread by the sword. It's an irony. Doesn't make sense. But we know that in Islam, Islam is a peaceful religion. It is totally against violence. But like every country, it has a police force. It has its rules and regulations. It wants peace and security. But there is a police force which uses sometimes force to implement peace. But this police only uses as a last resort, if it's a good police. Huh? Some police is used for wrong things in some countries. But generally, to maintain peace, the police may have to use force to maintain peace. In the same way in Islam, violence is prohibited. Except as a last resort, if you want to maintain peace and somebody wants to disrupt peace, that's the time you can use force. The best reply to this misconception is given by Delesio O'Leary. He's a very famous historian. He writes in the book Islam at the Crossroad on page number 8 that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastically absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. We Muslims, we ruled Spain for about 800 years. The crusaders came, they wiped out the Muslim. There was not a single Muslim who could give the adhan openly. And today in Spain, hardly you find any Muslim, just a small percentage. We ruled Spain for 800 years. We didn't use force. We have the example of the Arab countries. For the last several decades, the Muslims have been the lord of the Arab land. A few years the Britishers came, a few years the French came, but overall, we have been the lord of the Arab land, we have ruled the Arab land for the last several decades. Today, there are about 9 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians. Coptic Christian means they're Christians in generation. If the Muslims would have used the sword and forced everyone to accept Islam, there would not be a single non-Muslim alive. These 9 million Arab Coptic Christians in Arab land, in Egypt, etc., they are giving shahada that Islam was spread by the sword. The country where I come from, India, we Muslims, we ruled India for about a thousand years. 
and at that time india was the most powerful country in the world it was called as a golden bird and the amount of development that india made when the muslims ruled is phenomenal we ruled india for a thousand years we didn't use the sword today more than 75 percent of the indian population they are non-muslims these 75 percent non-muslim indian population they are giving shahada they are bearing witness that islam was spread by the sword if we wanted if the muslims wanted they could have converted everyone at the point of the sword we didn't do it these 75 percent non-muslims in india they are giving shahada that islam was spread by the sword and today they say after the new government has come muslims should leave the country who fought for the freedom? If you name the people who fought for the freedom of the country, you will find umpteen number of Muslims. When Muslims came, India became the strongest country in the world, most richest, most powerful. Britishers came, they looted it. They took away the wealth. So today, Indian government has no problem with Britishers. They're very close friends because they looted them. They took all the wealth. We made the proper, they made the Indian their slaves. Many slaves they bought in this country, Malaysia also. Why these double standards? The people that helped the country grow to come to its level, the highest that India was at any time when the Muslims ruled. It was the richest country. The British has come and they loot them and they're very close to them. They rob them. They make them slaves. Yet they want to be, they didn't want to follow the master. These 75% non-Muslims in India, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was inspired by the sword. Which Muslim army went to Indonesia, which has the largest population of Muslims in the world? Which Muslim army came to Malaysia? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? Where many countries majority of the population are Muslims. Which sort? They did by their class. Traders went. Which army came to Malaysia? Which army went to Indonesia? The majority, almost all were non-Muslims, then almost all became Muslims, mashallah. And later on, now there are people coming afterwards. Malaysia became fully Muslim. Then you had the Chinese coming, you had the Indian coming, the Britishers coming. They are our new guests. You know, somebody called me a guest. So I said, before me, the Chinese are the guest. They aren't born here. So if you want the new guest to go first, ask the old guest to go back. The Chinese, they're not born here, most of them. Or maybe the new generation, yes. So if you want the guest to go back, and those guests which are bringing peace in the community, they are benefit for the family. Which sword? Thomas Carlyle in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship, he writes, which sword? Every new idea originates in the mind of one. In one man head alone it dwells. One man in the full world. Little good it will do that he propagates his idea with a sword. Which sword? Even if the Muslim had the sword, he can't use it. Because Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 256, like Rafi there is no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. What Thomas Carlyle is talking about the sword is the sword of intellect, the sword of love, the sword of reasoning, the sword of mercy. As I started my talk, Allah says in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 125, Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. It is the sort of love. It is the sort of reasoning. It is the sort of mercy which is conquering the hearts. No wonder today, the fastest growing religion in the world today is Islam. According to an article which came in Eater Digest Almanic Yearbook in 1984, it gave the statistics of the increase in the major world religion for a span of 50 years, from 1934 to 1984. And number one religion that increased the maximum was Islam, 235% in a span of 50 years, from 1934 
1984, in a span of 50 years, Islam increased by 235%. Christianity, only 47%. I'm asking the question, which war took place between 1934 and 1984, which forced the non-Muslim to become Muslims? Which war? Today, the fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. The fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. And however much they're trying to attack Islam, Alhamdulillah, that much Islam is spreading. I would like to end the answer of this question and this allegation, this misconception, with the quotation of Dr. Adam Pearson. Dr. Adam Pearson says that people worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs. They fail to realize that the Islamic bomb, the bomb of peace, into brackets, has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Though Adam Pearson is a critic, he wrote the statement against Islam, trying to tell them that you don't wait for the nuclear bomb. The Islamic bomb has already been dropped. I call Islamic bomb is the bomb of peace. I agree with him. It has been dropped. It is not the bomb to kill like the Hiroshima, like what the Westerners did. It is the Islamic bomb of peace. It already fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born.